everyone seems to be talking about the GameCube again nowadays because you got people that are like belittling your intelligence and like, this is how you take a GameCube game out on these YouTube shorts and they're blowing up. And I don't know why. Screw you, John. Screw you. But on a serious note, the GameCube is a system that I definitely really enjoy. I prefer the N64 a little bit more than the GameCube, but that doesn't mean that the GameCube isn't a great system because there's a ton of great games on the system. Now, hidden gems lists are getting harder and harder to do because everyone seems to know about every game. But there's some games that I feel like nobody ever talks about on the GameCube, even in the current age of the renaissance of the GameCube. So I want to be the one to talk about these games. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk about before we go go into the list some games i'm excluding on purpose because i haven't played them before a game like odama or billy hatcher those are on a lot of people's hidden gems list i've never played those games before so i'm not going to talk about them and some games i feel they're not hidden gems but they always seem to come up on hidden gems list such as you know your stuff like tales of symphonia i'm not talking about bats and kaitos i'm not talking about all that stuff i'm trying to talk about some deeper cuts of the GameCube library and the video game landscape at that time. So with that being said, let's talk about some GameCube hidden gems. Just emulate all these games. I don't want to hear any crying about game prices. You're driving up the game price. No, I'm not because I'm telling you to emulate this. I'm not telling you to buy any single one of these games. There's a million different emulators out there, a million different devices you can do it with. So don't, don't cry to me about it, but let's talk about some GameCube games now. The first game we're going to talk about is a game that is available on other platforms as well. You can actually buy it on Steam currently, but I always assimilate it with the GameCube because that's where I played this title. And that is a game called Second Sight. Now, Second Sight should have been a more popular game. The problem was there was a game that came out on PlayStation 2 and Xbox that was kind of similar called PsyOps that got all the attention that used sort of a similar gameplay mechanic. But for me personally, I like the story in Second Sight a lot more. You're basically an old soldier who has forgotten a bunch of stuff and he's in like some weird little chamber thing, government, and you get flashbacks and you go back to the past and do things that you did within the past. You're trying to figure out what is going on, trying to re gain your memory but the cool thing about this game is the combat in the game or kind of the lack thereof it's sort of a combat driven but also a stealth driven game and you get psychic abilities that you end up leveling up that become stronger and you get more different abilities as you progress through the game it's a really fun game it's a game that i have thoroughly enjoyed it's something that whenever anyone asks me about an under the radar game for the nintendo gamecube i always bring up second sight because yes it is a multi-platform release you can get this on other platforms but the problem is nobody bought this on any platform so it doesn't matter what you assimilate this game with because it is a fun game it still looks pretty good the voice acting is a little bit shoddy but i think the overall experience that you get with second sight is a fantastic experience it's a game that i loved back in the day i still like to play it from time to time now and second sight is definitely a game that's held up very well so if you haven't checked out second sight make sure you check it out on your nintendo gamecube or on something else sticking with the paranormal sort of stuff we're going to talk about the next game on my list which is geist yes geist is a good game i thought geist was a good game back in the day when it first came out i bought it i enjoyed it i didn't understand why a lot of people didn't like it i thought people maybe didn't like it because of the fact that there was no online multiplayer and that was kind of the big thing in first person shooters it did have local multiplayer but there was no online multiplayer but people seem to absolutely hate this game and i don't know why once again voice acting sucks this is not good not good voice acting but the game itself is freaking awesome after the intro cutscene you die that's it you're done game over or is it because now you become a geist which is a paranormal entity and you can basically take control of pretty much a ton of stuff within the levels you can control a rat and like scare a guard you can control an alarm and scare a guard once you scare the guard then you could become the guard and have his gun and have his abilities like the whole premise is absolutely fascinating it's so freaking cool to figure out how many different ways you could become different things or different characters or different inanimate objects within this game in order to advance through the game and get to the ending i think the story is decent enough it's kind of like a between the realm sort of thing because you're dead you die very early in the game but i thoroughly thoroughly enjoy guys it's not really a looker you know the graphics on the game 
aren't that great and they weren't that great for the time frame that was one of the main things that this game got knocked down on but people looked at the graphics of geist and then just wrote off the entire game without actually playing it and when you actually play it the gameplay is just top notch i wish they would make another geist game honestly i wish they would at least hd remaster the original geist because it was so different it was so fresh and it was so unique and i don't think any game has really sort of captivated that experience that geist gives you don't sleep on this game i know for a fact that this is a super cheap game i hope i drive up the price so that none of you can afford it i'm just kidding if if this video does that i i apologize in advance but just emulate it anyways like your freaking computer can run gamecube probably just fine but geist great game i don't care what anyone says kiss my ass i love it next up is a game that i mean you've definitely played it before but i think the gamecube version of the game is honestly the best version of the game in terms of becoming as close to the arcade if not better than the arcade as humanly possible and that is crazy taxi now crazy taxi released on the dreamcast i'm not sure if it came out on the playstation 2 i'm pretty sure it came out on the xbox but i like the gamecube version of the game best because I kind of like the GameCube controller. I know a lot of people don't like it, but this is pretty much Crazy Taxi at its peak with the official soundtrack that, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you got to have that offspring in there or else it's just not really Crazy Taxi. Of course, Crazy Taxi is a simple game. You're going around picking up would-be fair people and bringing them to a location on the map that they need to go to in a specific amount of time. The quicker you do it, the better you bonus you get, the more time bonus you get, the more money you get. It's an arcade game, but I just feel like the GameCube version of the game is super good. It's super enjoyable, and it's really one of the best, if not the best, versions of the original Crazy Taxi game. I know there's other Crazy Taxi games out there, but for me and my nostalgia purposes, the first one is still the best one, and I love playing this game on the GameCube, and honestly, it wasn't until like two years ago that I knew that there was a GameCube version of the game, so this is a recent play for me when I picked it up, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So you should be like me and pick it up now this game's a freaking banger this game rules ass and i loved it back in the day and i still love it now godzilla destroy all monsters melee now melee you know if you have to smash brothers melee that's what everyone assimilates with the gamecube no you, you can keep that like smash brothers melee great game don't get me wrong but godzilla and kaiju creatures are cool all right i like godzilla I like the different forms of Godzilla, the Mecha Godzilla, this sort of Godzilla, all the different characters, Rodan and Mothra and all the other characters that are assimilated within the Godzilla universe. And they were like, yo, let's make a Godzilla fighting game where you can like destroy the buildings around you and like you're just a big kaiju creature doing all these attacks. And that's what Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee is. This is a fantastic game. This, in my opinion, is a top 15 game on the GameCube, no matter what we're talking about. We're talking about the best games on the GameCube. I'm putting Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee on there. It's so much fun. It always just feels fresh because of the whole sort of what's gonna happen within this level, what's going to happen within this fight that I'm currently fighting in, especially when you're playing against a friend and like local co-op mode because it's just so much fun i love all the big creatures in the game i still think the game looks phenomenal especially for the time frame that it came out in it really hasn't aged all that much this is yet another game much like geist that i would love to see get an hd remaster godzilla destroy all monsters melee fantastic game do not sleep on it one of the best games available on the gamecube now this next game i'm not going to talk too much about because i feel like everyone has already talked about it it's pretty much been on every gamecube hidden gem video that has ever really existed so here we go it's beautiful joe beautiful joe fantastic game henshin a go go baby i loved beautiful joe at that time frame but you got to remember the reason why beautiful joe was not a huge success wasn't because the character was kind of weird and you know kind of a japanese based sort of character because that stuff is super popular especially back then the problem with beautiful joe was it was a 2d game and at that time 2d games were not appreciated nobody wanted to play new 2d games with the more powerful hardware that was coming out we wanted to see the push to these 3d worlds and 2d games from that time frame are criminally underrated ask anyone they will tell you that and that is the reason why beautiful joe was not a successful game beautiful joe is a freaking fantastic game it's one of the best games on the gamecube once again i would put this on my top 15 gamecube games of all time regardless about what we're talking about it's a fun 2d action platformer game you kind of know what to expect it's very fast paced the graphics are absolutely beautiful the world that they've crafted is interesting and funny and quirky as well a fantastic game man beautiful joe do not sleep on it the only reason people slept on it back in the day was simply because it was a 2d game but you're smarter than that and you could appreciate 2d games now 
Bullet hell games are all the rage nowadays, but back in the day, there wasn't really that many, and shoot 'em up games on the GameCube were kind of few and far between. Everyone always talks about Ikaruga. They try to say that that's a hidden gem, and I'm like, who, who doesn't know about Ikaruga? That's like saying, oh, Skies of Arcadia Legends, that's a hidden gem. No, it's not. It's one of the best games on the system. So when you're looking at shoot 'em up games on the GameCube, the one game that comes to mind is a bullet hell game because bullet hell games at that time were not nearly as popular as they are now, and that is simply Chaos Field. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about this game. It's a shoot 'em up game. It's a bullet hell game, but I think it's very fun. It's a very good looking game, and it's a very fast playing game. I remember buying this game on a whim back in the day when GameStop, I was working at the GameStop and they were liquidating all the GameCube stuff that we had because they were kind of trying to do the retro stuff at that time. They've tried to do retro stuff many, many times. This isn't a one-off occurrence. They always, uh, they think it's like a new idea or something. But this game is super fun if you're a fan of shoot 'em up games and bullet hell games. And really the most important thing is there's not a lot of shoot 'em up games on the GameCube, but if you're looking for a new one to play, definitely check out Chaos Field. I have no idea if it's an expensive one nowadays, but emulate it. I've said emulate these games a million times. I don't want to hear bitching about the prices of these games. Our next game is yet another first party Nintendo game, and I, I know your little wheels are turning in your head. You're like, okay, it's going to be Chibi Robo. No, it's not going to be Chibi Robo because that game has been overexposed in my opinion. Okay, okay, uh, it's not Chibi Robo. Oh, it's going to be Star Fox Adventure because everyone hates that game. No, it's not going to be Star Fox Adventures because I love Star Fox Adventures and I've always talked well about it and I don't see how a Star Fox Zelda game could really be considered a hidden gem. However, there is one game on the GameCube that is a published first-party Nintendo title, much like Geist, went under the radar, nobody appreciates it. We haven't seen this franchise once again since the Wii and that's a damn shame because it's Battalion Wars take advance wars make it a real-time strategy game where you can control anything on the map you can control an infantryman you can control a tank you can control an airplane you can control a boat anything you want and you actually control it if you're an infantryman you're pew 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 shooting the guns if you're a tank you're rolling over people and blowing crap up battalion wars is a brilliant game Battalion Wars should be Nintendo's answer to games like Call of Duty, to games like Battlefield, because this is a unique spin on an Advance Wars formula, which of course is a turn-based strategy game, but this is a real-time strategy game, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Nobody bought this game on the GameCube. Nobody bought the successor on the Wii, which had freaking online, which just made it so much fun. I don't understand it. I don't understand why nobody cares about Battalion Wars, but you know who cares about Battalion Wars? I do. I care about Battalion Wars. It's a hidden gem because nobody appreciates it, nobody loves it, and I love it. And that's all that matters at the end of the day because this is my list. But seriously, Battalion Wars is an absolute banger. One day this game will get the appreciation it deserves. We just might have to be the ones to appreciate it. Sonic the Hedgehog is cool. I like Sonic the Hedgehog. I've always enjoyed his games as a child. It was shocking to see Sonic the Hedgehog on Nintendo platforms back in the early 2000s. I mean, you had Sonic games like Sonic Adventure coming out on the GameCube because Sega wasn't making consoles anymore. It was weird, man. It was like, it, that was like the end of times. Like if you would have said, okay, this is the end of the world, I would have been like, you're, you're completely right because this is insanity. But Sonic, of course, is a franchise that has had a lot of games a lot of obscure games a lot of weird games as well and there's a compilation on the gamecube that is just mint it is just mint and once again some of these games still have not released on other platforms this is the best way to play a bunch of obscure ass sonic the hedgehog games with the sonic gems collection the sonic gems collection a hidden gem it just goes right hand in hand now the list of games is as follows you have sonic the fighters which was an arcade game that was really cool sonic cd sonic r which of course is the infamous racing game on the sega saturn you have sonic the hedgehog 2 for the game gear sonic spinball for the game gear sonic the hedgehog triple trouble for the game gear sonic drift 2 for the game gear tail sky patrol for the game gear and tails adventure for the game gear and there's actually unlockable games such as vector man vector man 2 bonanza brothers streets of rage 1 2 and 3 and there's also unlockable Sega Genesis games in this as well. But for me, just having these Game Gear games and being able to play them on your TV, especially at that time, because there was no way to do something like that. That was just freaking awesome because some of those Game Gear games are like super underrated and they're super good. Sonic the Fighters is the weirdest freaking fighting game 
like in the world but it looks great and it plays great on the gamecube sonic r this is actually an enhanced version of sonic r that plays a hell of a lot better than the vanilla version does i love both versions of sonic r but if you actually want to experience the game and play the game with better controls sonic r on this sonic gems collection for the nintendo gamecube is a must-have it is a must-have because they fix the controls it feels so much better than the original version does but i still love the original version but yeah this is a great compilation there's another one the sonic mega collection that has all your typical sonic games on here but i like this one better we've played all those traditional sonic games sonic 1 2 and 3 how many friggin' times do i have to play those games again i do love playing them but i would like to play something a bit different and to have games like sonic are all the gamecube releases and sonic the fighters and of course sonic cd at that time that was a huge deal there's a lot of bonus stuff on this disc as well super underrated hidden gem of sonic gems collection i don't know how expensive it is i have a copy i'm looking at it it's right over there and i see the mega collection too i have both of them and the final game on the list consists of a fighting franchise that is honestly one of my favorite games of all time tons of childhood nostalgia for it and no i'm not talking about mortal combats and stuff like that because there was a ton of fighting games on the gamecube but really this is an action rpg based off of a fighting franchise and that is of course a game called virtual quest a weird sort of action rpg that takes place within the virtual fighter universe kind of sort of i don't know the story in this game isn't all that great and i'm not even saying that this is necessarily a great game i i don't think it's a great game i think it's a good game but it was a game that was critically uh, just panned when it first came out and I don't think that's necessarily fair because this was kind of something that was very different than what a lot of other games were doing at that time the inclusion of virtual fighter character cameos in the game I thought was pretty cool some of the levels that you go into and actually play on are inspired by virtual fighter you'll probably recognize some of them I don't know I don't think this is necessarily a great game but I think it's definitely a hidden gem because I don't think it's nearly as bad as reviewers made it out to be during that time frame there's a lot of good here there's a lot of questionable stuff as well but if you're able to look past some of that stuff I think there's a very solid game here that's definitely worth at least checking out for a few minutes on an emulator because I don't want you to buy any of these games because we're not complaining about prices in the comment section you are going to complain about the quality of the games only because you're going to play them on an emulator and virtual quest should be the first game that you boot up on an emulator it's an action rpg set within the virtual fighter universe kind of like shenmue was when you really think about it this is kind of like shenmue if shenmue didn't happen because shenmue was originally supposed to be a game based kind of on virtual fighter as well i, I don't know sega was just weird they, they just loved virtual fighter back then but now they can't stand it and they never talk about it all righty so those are some gamecube hidden gems for you guys to check out like i said i don't know the prices of any of these games i don't care about the prices of any of these games emulate them don't download dolphin emulator play them on your computer you could buy handheld devices that could play these games just fine your steam deck can play these games just fine most of them some of them we'll say some of them just fine i don't want to hear any complaints but i do want to hear your feedback in the comment section down below like i said some of the cliche games i'm not going to talk about them because i feel like they've been over talked about or i've just never played them so let me know some other games in the comment section down below let your fellow brethren breath woman in the comment section know some games as well and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit the bell notification as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later